Welcome back to Blender Daily. In today's tutorial, I want to demonstrate how to create this abstract animation with a particle system in Blender. This tutorial is aimed at beginners, so I'm gonna explain everything step by step and move slowly so you can follow along with me. Let's get started. All right, let's start this project with a new scene in Blender. And first of all, let's delete this lamp object. We're not gonna use it, so just press X and click on delete. And also select this cube, press G and X to move it over here. Uh, we're gonna use it as a particle instance, but we don't need to see the actual cube, so we can just move it to the side for now. Then let's press Shift A and under Mesh bring in a new plane. This is gonna be the emitter for our particle system. And now in order to give it actual particles, just go to the particle properties with the plane selected and click on the plus to add a new particle system. And to see the particle animation, click this play button down here or use the spacebar to pause and play the animation. Now currently you can see that those particles are just falling down, which is not what we need for our project. So in order to fix this, just go to the field weights and turn off the gravity. So now the particles are floating upwards instead of falling down. But I think that they are a bit too fast. So let's adjust the speed by going to the velocity settings and bringing down this normal speed. So maybe use 0.1 meters per second, which is already better. However, you can see that after 50, uh, 50 frames, the particles start disappearing. I don't want this to happen, so in the lifetime, I'm just gonna give it a really high value, like 1000 frames, so the particles won't disappear anymore. But what I currently don't like is that on frame one, we just have a blank plane without any particles. So in order to fix this, just bring down this frame start value to a negative value to let's say minus 500 frames. So the particles will start to emit on frame minus 500 and on frame one, we already have particles in the air. Now currently they are just floating straight upwards, which is a bit boring. So to make this more interesting, we can go to the velocity settings and increase this randomized value to let's say 0.05, which will also give the particles some left and right movement and not just straight up. And what we also need to do is bring up the end value to 250, since this is the length of our timeline. So now this looks a lot better and we are ready to replace our spherical objects that we have right here with our instancer cube that we have over here. But uh, first let's make the cube a bit smoother by adding a bevel modifier to it. So just go to the bevel properties with the cube selected, click on add modifier and give it a bevel. This will cut all those edges and to make it smooth, just increase the number of segments then right click on the cube and choose Shade Smooth. We can also scale down the bevel a bit by bringing down this amount value to make just this slight bevel. Okay, so now we are ready to replace our spherical instances with our cube. So go to the particle settings and on the render, change it from render as halo to render as object. Then as the instance object, just select our cube. And now we have all those little cubes instanced as particles. And I don't like that all the cubes have the same scale. So under scale randomness, I'm gonna bring up this value to let's say something between 0.7 and 0.8. So we have some really small cubes and others that are bigger. And I also don't like that they all have the same rotation. So I take this checkbox next to rotation, bring up the random rotation and also randomize the face. So we have completely randomly rotated objects. 
which I think uh, looks better. Okay, so next let's place the camera in our scene and just make sure that you have a camera object in here and if you don't just press shift A and bring in a camera right here. Then place the view wherever you want to have the camera. So for me, this is gonna be up here. Then just press Control, Alt and Numpad zero to place the camera in your current view. And now with the camera selected, you can press G to move around, R to rotate or double press R to use trackball rotation and rotate along all axes at the same time. But I think I'm pretty happy with the placement of the camera. But I just want to scale up the ground plane a bit to make it bigger. And with the camera selected, go to the camera properties and increase the focal length to zoom in a bit and make sure that the camera covers this ground plane. Okay, so I like the placement. However, I don't think we have enough particles yet. So let's select the emitter again, go to the particle settings and just increase this number of particles to let's say around 7,000 particles. Now we have a lot more particles and I think this looks pretty cool. Okay, so now we are already almost ready to get to the shading part, but first we need to bake our particle system. For this, go to the cache options and just click on bake. This will save all the movements of our particles to memory and make sure that we don't get any issues when rendering. So before rendering, always make sure that you bake your particle system. And you can also see that we are not, not able anymore to make any changes in our particle systems. And if you need to make any changes, just make sure that you first delete the bake. Now you are able to use those values again and then before rendering, click on bake again to save everything to memory. Okay, so once this is baked, we can switch to the render preview in order to add shaders to our cubes. And currently we are in cycles, which I don't want to be. Instead, I wanna use Eevee as the render engine so we get real time rendering. And currently you can see that we don't have any lights in our scene, so everything is pretty dark. And for the lighting of this scene, we are gonna use an HDR texture from polyhaven.com. So I put the link to this in the video description. This is completely free to download. And it's basically just a 360 degree panorama image that we can wrap around our objects in Blender and use this for the lighting. So just change the resolution to 1K and click on download to save it to your computer. I've already downloaded it, so let's go back to Blender. And in order to import it, first of all, make sure that you are in Render Preview, then go to the World Properties and click on this yellow button next to Color. Then choose Environment Texture and click on Open in order to import the HDRI. Go to the folder where you saved it, select it and choose open image. And now we have this in here. And you can see that we also have light on our objects now. So this worked perfectly. However, I don't want to have any colors from the HDRI because they are gonna reflect in our cubes. So I want to make the HDR black and white. And in order to do this, just drag open a new window from the corner and change this to the shader editor. We don't want to edit the material, but instead the world. So change it to the world notes. And here you can see that we have our environment texture node. In order to make this black and white, press shift A and under color, bring in a hue saturation node and just bring down the saturation to zero. So now we have this black and white HDRI and we still have the lighting as you can see. Okay, so next let's continue with the shading of our cubes. So just select the cube in the outliner, change the nodes back to object and click on plus to add a new material. I wanna make it completely metallic. So I just bring up this metallic value 
and currently this doesn't look really good so let's go to the render properties to improve it and enable ambient ambient occlusion to get those contact shadows and I also want to use screen space reflections so we get accurate reflections in our cubes. Then I don't want all the cubes to have exactly the same color. So in the shader editor, I'm going to press shift A and under input, bring in a object info node that is right here and use the random output for the base color. So we get random values for all of the cubes. Now I don't want to use just black and white colors. So after the random output, we are going to add in a color ramp node. And now we can change the colors of this gradient. And this will also change the colors of our cubes. So in order to do this, let's first select this black color, make it brighter. And for example, give it this yellow color. And for the white one, let's... Um, Let's give it this blue color or no, I think it is better to make it a bit orange and darker. So now we have those yellow and orange cubes and each of them has a slightly different color that are all taken from this gradient. And if you want to improve the gradient a bit, I like to change it from RGB to HSV, which usually gives a better gradient. Uh, but in this case, I don't think it makes a big difference. But I just prefer to change this to HSV. Then currently we still have this white ground plane. So let's select the plane and in this drop down menu select the same material. So it is going to blend in a bit better. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. But there's one more thing that I want to do, which is adding a bit depth of field to our camera. So just select the camera, go to the camera properties and enable depth of field. Now currently everything gets blurred, but to fix this, just play with this focus distance value and increase it until some of the cubes become sharp. Then you can also adjust the f-stop to change the range, which is going to be sharp. So in this case, I think an f-stop around eight or maybe even 12 should be all right. Okay, so that's it basically for our animation and we are ready for rendering. So let's switch to the rendering tab, select a random frame and just press F12 to make a test render and see if everything's working. And there's one more thing that I would like to change, which is in the color management settings. Under look, we can increase the contrast so let's try high contrast or very high contrast, but I think medium high or high contrast should be enough. This just makes the image look a bit more interesting and I think we are ready to render the animation. So let's switch to the output properties, change the file format from PNG to FFmpeg video so that it actually exports a video file then in the encoding, select the MP4 preset and change the output quality from medium to perceptually lossless. Then don't forget to set an output folder right here. For me, this is going to be in here and also give it a file name. For example, particles, cubes. Then click on accept and in order to render the animation, just go up here, render render animation or use the shortcut control F12. All right, so while the animation is rendering, let's quickly talk about today's sponsor. This simulation that I demonstrated in this video is quite simple and should run smoothly on almost any computer. If you want to make bigger or more complex particle systems, however, your hardware might get to its limits pretty quickly. But thanks to Rendero, you don't need to worry about that anymore. They provide really powerful cloud computers for a very fair price. Those virtual machines are extremely fast and allow you to do intensive 3D work without having to upgrade your hardware. I've already used it for some of my projects and I was really happy with their service. 
Learn more about cloud computing on rendero.com. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting and you could learn something new. I am Nick from Blender Daily. See you in the next one.